<laughs> to cut it or not to cut it. This video goes out to a good friend Mandy and uh, Payne, Jade, um, Vanessa as well, who have also been talking about fasting of late and asking a fair few questions. So I thought I'd get out this video, hopefully to help uh, augment your, um, your wisdom and knowledge behind it all. So what I've got before me here is an array of fruits and veg, some tinctures and such, and my cold press juicer, which has done me pretty well over the last couple of years. So there's a couple of different ways in which I like to fast and uh, the reasons why I think most people out there should fast or would find fasting beneficial is because it can help with everything from bad breath to prevention of disease to treating disease to uh, losing weight to cleaning skin to helping mood to uh, helping energy levels focus attention sleep at night libido whatever you want so there's certainly a hell of a lot of reasons and if you're trying to do a diet or something like that it's usually yeah two weeks three weeks great and at the end of it boom you're off the uh off the wagon and you tend to uh, overindulge. So I'm not really a fan of dieting per se. Um, so I find fasting can be really quite good, especially when people have got you know very complex lives. It's something that you can just hack, it's like a body hack. So three different kinds of fasting uh, that I like to play with. One is intermittent fasting, which is the glorified way of skipping meals. Um, I don't pretend, I don't do that too often. I don't really, really enjoy it. Uh, I find having smaller meals or grazing or getting rid of things like meats, uh, you know, sugars, etc., uh, works a lot better than it. But it might be really quite beneficial for people that are trying to get into the groove of fasting. So intermittent fasting, I think what most people do when they intermittent fast is sort of eat between, say, noon or one and seven and eight at night. So you basically got that little window where you can eat, then you essentially fast and don't eat for 16 hours. Um, one thing to remember when you are fasting is to double or quadruple the amount of water that you drink. Stay really, really, really hydrated. Otherwise, you can get a little bit plugged up in the digestive system. Ain't too happy with you. So that's number one. Um, have a bit of a research online and see what might sound better for you. Uh, naturally, I think most people will gravitate away from breakfast in the morning because the hormone levels and the chemistry in our body is such that we have a bit more energy in the morning and don't particularly feel that hunger. If you do get those kind of hunger pangs in the morning, it's more likely dehydration, so stay hydrated. All right, the second style is um, water fasting. Now, I love water fasting, love it, okay? It is amazing. The way that you feel on a water fast is tremendous. Now, the most common question I get, or probably more common reaction that I get is, you don't eat anything, how do you live? Well, there are other practitioners out there who I learned under, such as the Tyler and Don Tolmans. I think they're probably the best in the world, or at least they're in your face um, to the greatest extent. Have a bit of a look on, for, on those guys uh, online. They run a whole bunch of sort of fasting retreats and fasting weeks and fasting, I don't know, webinars or whatever. So have a bit of a look at those guys as well. But essentially, a water fast is almost a spiritual experience. It's really quite amazing. Um, all you basically do is, in place of your food, you drink this stuff. Now, preferably, when talking about the quality of water, I would prefer people get their hands on some sort of water filtration system. Um, in a perfect world, you'd be able to get rid of fluoride and things like that as well but that's really quite difficult because what you're gonna go through is sort of like a reverse osmosis system. Uh, not only is it very costly, but it also takes all the minerals out. You don't wanna do that. You wanna get rid of the nasties, which is sort of your chlorines and your heavy metals and your fluorides and that kind of stuff because it, uh, it isn't particularly good for our neurological system. Um, so yeah, so try and find some, a good source of you know, filtered water or you know, happy water, whatever you can do. And make sure you put the water into sunlight as well because it activates um, a couple of the participles and things within the actual water itself, making it a lot more healthy and activated. Um, what I tend to do when I water fast is start small. Um, if you were gonna do it for the first time, try and do a day, that's it. Uh, anything longer than the day, once you start to fast for about, let's say, four days, uh, water fast for about four days, you are going to have to drink up to and including about four or five litres of water because if you don't, once again, your, um, uh, your digestive system tends to back up a little bit. So keep that in mind. 
And if you are gonna go any longer than four days to seven days, um, do your research, really get into it, work out the way that you're gonna ramp up into it, and then come down off it. Into it. Okay, so let's get to uh, let's get to juice fasting, shall we? Now, what I want to try and instill in you is to understand that there are certain fruits and veg which will mimic the uh, the shape of uh, of certain organs in the body. So, by now, most people should understand that carrots are good for your eyes. And if you look at the carrot itself, it looks like an iris, doesn't it? So, one would think that a carrot would naturally be quite good for your eyes. Um, if you cut open a, um, a strawberry, kindly donated by um, Black Forest Fruits and Black Forest Farms. Thank you very much, Michael. But on the inside there, you can look like, it looks kind of like the Cordae tendinae on the inside of the heart. So um, naturally, they're very good for your heart. And also very good to bleach your teeth. Um, a tomato, say, okay, very good for prostate. It looks like prostate too, doesn't it? But once again, you open it up, kind of has a heart looking configuration on the inside. If you open up, the pear looks like two lobes of lungs. Okay, so very good for your lungs. Now, having said that, according to Chinese medical wisdom, anything which is white, your sort of white foods, so your onions, your pears, your um, apples, etc., etc., are really quite good for your um, lungs. Same as um, uh, same as the ginger there, but the ginger I like as well because it gives you a bit of fire, it gives you a little bit of energy. So. If you are going to eat certain foods or you are going to juice certain foods, think about what uh, what organ it might actually help heal more and you can sort of start to become your own um, treatment specialist, if you will. I mean, even look at, say, uh, say beans. They look like kidneys, don't they? Or if you get... Um, uh, what, are our, what else are some of the good ones? Well, anything fermented is good for the stomach. Um, anything which is uh, your sort of grey leafies is good for your bloods. Anything which is dark, so your beetroots, um, your purple carrots, those different kinds of things are really quite good for your kidneys, okay, and liver. So start to consider which organs you really want to try and treat and do a little bit of research around that. Now, I've also included two, other, two or three other things over here. My high vitamin, which is just a vitamin that I use. I like it because it's liquid form. It um, uh, uses colloidal style um, vitamins and minerals, which is basically... All that basically means is it's in the form in which the body can use it. So there's no point in having, you know, um, a big pharmaceutical made vitamin which your body can't use because what it's actually going to need is an array of different vitamins and bits and pieces to try and pull apart all the molecules and then use it, you know. Um, that's why a lot of processed foods are particularly bad for the body because it requires so much energy to digest. All right, so keep that in mind. Um, most people say you should be able to get your vitamins from the food that you eat, and I would agree with them, but only if you know we're talking about uh, organic fruits and foods and things which you grow yourself so you know exactly what's going into the soil, devoid of anything like pesticides and bits and pieces. So um, you, yes, you can in theory, but if you're gonna go to Coles and just load up on all the fruit and veg there, then you're probably not gonna get the nutrients that you really, really should get. Now, I've also included this stuff here, um, colloidal uh, magnesium. Now, I recommend magnesium quite a lot in practice because it's very, very good for balancing out um, acid base in the body. And it's also really, really good for people that uh, drink a lot of coffee, which is pretty much 95% of Australians. Now. From the horse's mouth, uh, that every illness known is associated with magnesium deficiency, and says further, uh, magnesium is the most critical mineral required for electrical stability of every cell in the body. A magnesium deficiency may be responsible for more diseases than any other nutrient. Norman Shearley, MD, PhD, neurosurgeon, that's it. Um, and then also here, over here, I've got some homeopathic tinctures. Now, this one I created for myself, which has thyme, milk thistle, turmeric, and ginkgo. Ginkgo is really good for cerebral blood flow. Uh, also helps with memory and stuff like that. You'll probably see it uh, marketed in that kind of way. Turmeric, really, really good anti-inflammatory. So anybody out there who's Jimmy, anybody out there with pain, anybody out there with any kind of 
you know, inflammatory arthritis, something like that, like arthritis and things, that's really gonna help. It is a root, it's been used for thousands and thousands of years, all the way through Chinese medical doctrine, Eastern um, medicines, etc. And there's a lot of Western medical um, trials which are going on now, sort of comparing turmeric and the top of the line um, anti inflames and things like that. The reason why I like turmeric, not only is it given to us by nature, but it's not gonna burn a hole in your stomach. So, once again, enough said. Milk thistle, really, really good for liver detoxing. Okay, it's like a tonic. Uh, and thyme is one of those kind of all-around awesome herbs which basically um, boosts the potency of everything else, just like garlic will. So, I hope that has been enlightening and somewhat entertaining. Uh, I'll get back to work. So, enjoy, share it. If you need more information, jump on thehealthstudio.com.au or lorenzomirabelli.com. Like and share some of the videos because we've got to try and get some of this information out there. So, um, start to make a positive contribution to civilization, which is precisely why I am making all these videos. Good luck. Chat to you soon.